Today, I'm going back in time to when I first started lifting, but with what I know now. How would I eat? How would I train? What would I do to stay motivated? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. The first thing I would do is find what is my motivation? Why am I doing this? You see, fitness is not a game that you can save and play later. This is a game that you play for the rest of your life. Maybe you wanna get the guy, maybe you wanna get the girl, or maybe you are just too tired of shopping for children's clothes. Or maybe you wanna look like your favorite natty bodybuilder. But if you do some digging, you might find that they take so much stuff that they actually go to the vet instead of the doctor for their monthly checkups. So set realistic goals and have the right motivations. Otherwise, your motivation is gonna be driven by guilt the second you look at yourself in the mirror on day number one. So you have decided to make the choice and adopt a fitness lifestyle. You've also made the choice to never see food as food. Food is now numbers. I'm just kidding, but you definitely need to go through that phase. I just think it's a good idea to understand how much you should be eating. I'm not saying to whip out a food scale right away. You're probably young, you're in high school, you're a young entrepreneur, you got plenty of other grams to measure in the meantime. What I am saying is start to be cognizant of portion sizes, how much you should be eating and what is considered too much for you. Will, how do I go about finding my calories? Well, I would go into Google and type in calorie calculator. So these things are not like the government. They don't know everything about you, so they're not gonna be 100% accurate. That's why I always recommend, whatever you get, monitor your weight for at least 10 days, because the last thing you wanna do is leave it and you end up looking like the mascot of America. So it's gonna take some time, trial and error, but eventually you're gonna find your maintenance calories and you're gonna be way ahead of the game. A calorie calculator is not like your dating profile. You don't wanna to lie to get the results that you want. You gotta be honest here. This is like a confessional. You can hide the truth, but a higher power like God or your basal metabolic rate will always know what's true. For breakfast today, I am making some eggs and I'm having some cereal. And this is one of my go-to breakfasts before I got into lifting. And the point is, your diet does not need to change at all when you start working out. Of course, you wanna focus on healthy foods, and I was under the opinion that I had to throw out all of my favorite foods, everything that I loved, I gotta to toss it out, and then the Quaker Oatman became one of my many daddies, but that does not have to be the case. Like I mentioned before, if you understand portion control, anything in the proper amounts is totally fine. Of course, again, focusing on whole healthy foods. Kofi, do I got a three egg flip? Uh, you got something. Let's go. Three, two. Oh, what? I burnt myself. You gotta like the video for that one. Come on, like the video for that. For your first supplement run, I recommend going on your own and not with your parents. I made that mistake and I ended up at GNC where instead of protein, he was trying to sell me life insurance. So your parents are just nervous about you taking all these supplements and how can you blame them? They don't want you looking like a Chernobyl mutated Caillou. So they, they just don't understand. They're new to it just like you and it's a learning process together. So we're going to go into the supplement store right now. I'm going to show you what I would have got and if you were with your parents, what you should say. The first supplement is creatine. So you might take this out and your mom might be like, put it back. And then you tell her the obvious response, mom, it's the most researched supplement in the world. It's completely safe. Do you think your mom cares about that? No, moms care about two things. One is that you are the best version of yourself and two that you are better than all other kids. So you have to pull some reverse mom collagen. and you have to say to her, mom, do you want me to bench 315? Right away, she's gonna hear that and she's gonna hear pounds, grades, they are the exact same thing. And she's gonna do whatever she can to make sure that you are the best, whether that's getting you a tutor or sending you to school with Trenacini Alfredo for lunch. So I recommend five grams a day, every single day for life. The next supplement is protein powder. So when I first started lifting, I thought you had to consume at least your body weight in protein every single day. And it turns out you don't. Actually, one gram per pound is completely sufficient. It is tasty, it's convenient, and it's super easy to bake with. Highly recommend getting yourself a really good high quality protein powder. The next supplement I'm gonna recommend is pre-workout, the delicious poison with all the health risks that we know and love. I am on the fence about recommending this because some are actually so bad that if you take it consistently, you will look like the love child of Vin Diesel and Quasimodo, but some are very, very good. Like this one, it's great for strength, endurance, energy, focus, and honestly, one of my favorite parts of the day is driving to the gym, sipping on my pre-workout. Even if it's placebo, if the placebo works, it's worth it to me. So recommend picking one up, and I will say, please don't get reliant on it. Only take it when you absolutely need it. Alongside a healthy diet, these are the only supplements that I recommend. You don't need to take everything under the sun. Some people are afraid to drink a diet soda, but once they get into fitness, they become this experimental lab rat. Comparing a test booster to steroids is like saying that you won the lottery, and it's actually a scratch ticket, and you only want enough to replace the ticket from last week. 
It's gonna do absolutely nothing for you. So stick with the basics. Going to the gym for your first time is like a lot of other first times. It's gonna seem kind of overwhelming. Things are gonna get awkward. There's gonna be a lot of eyes on you and you're gonna have to pay. When I went for the first time, I thought everybody was judging me and it affected my work because it affected how I felt and I didn't really want to go back. But I promise you, everybody in there was once in the same position that you are now and they respect you. So don't feel people are judging you. They completely respect you. It's all part of the journey. The workout that we are doing today is the workout that I wish I did when I first got into lifting. So this is like the basic missionary of training. Nothing fancy, because we are building a foundation right now. So when I first started, I came into the gym and I winged it and I didn't know what I was doing. And man, do I regret that. Because when you are a novice lifter, you don't understand this phase. All lifters now dream about going back in time to this phase. You're practically on a natural steroid cycle. You grow every single day, so you want to take advantage of that. You want to take advantage of that, so do it right. So I recommend doing full body, compound focused, three days a week, with a rest day between each day. So like a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. On the screen right now. And now I know you're gonna wanna go like this. Don't do that. Full body. Like I said, the workout today is gonna to be fully compound in the five to eight rep range. So I stopped really doing anything above 10 reps before I even got into lifting. So no machines, no isolations, just focusing on heavy compounds, again, building that foundation. Uh, you don't wanna skip legs. I made that mistake when I first started. You know, I was like, I walk on my legs, I use them enough, I play hacky sack at recess with my friends. I use my legs so much, and then it turns into this phase where you promise yourself this week that you're gonna do legs next week, and it turns into this cycle, and before you know it, your body's being held up by a pair of stilts. So just make sure you train your legs. I know it's not fun, or is it hard? Are you mistaking it not being fun for being hard? So just make sure you squat. All you really need as a beginner is to squat. It'll build everything in your lower body. we're doing compound exercises is because they are multi-joint exercises. So the next exercise is the pause bench press, which is gonna be your main upper body builder. It's gonna build your chest, your triceps, and a lot of your shoulders. So the reason why we're adding a pause is because I think it's better to start off learning the harder way. So when you go to touch and go down the road, it makes it all easier and you're gonna be stronger. One thing that I can't really stress enough is tracking your workouts and tracking progressive overload. When I first started, I didn't do that at all. And I really regret that I actually just started doing that within a couple of years ago. And I have noticed instantaneously so much progress. So just have a notepad with you, write it in your phone in your notes. And how do you progress in a workout like this? When you are a novice, you should be able to add weight every single week. So the goal should be to add five pounds consistently to all your lifts. And once that slows down, you might want to reset or I highly recommend investing into some micro plates. So instead of two and a half pounds per side, it's 1.25 pounds. It slows the rate of progression down, but as long as you're going this way, it's all you can really ask for. The next thing we are gonna do is our main row of the day. It's gonna be a barbell row or a T-bar row. We're only gonna do three sets, because when you're a novice lifter, you do not need a lot of volume. Like a lot of other first times, you're not gonna last that long. So I always thought when I started that the more was better. The more I did, the more muscle I would get, and it actually did a lot more harm than good. So I can guarantee you, if you focus on effective volume, and you know, volume in the right places, and the right exercises, you will look bigger than all of your friends, I guarantee you. So this exercise, this workout that I showed you, might not seem like a lot, but I can guarantee you, if you follow it, you will look massive very quick.
The next exercise is gonna be the Romanian deadlift, two to three sets of eight reps. This will be the main posterior chain builder for muscle groups like your glutes, your lower back, and your hamstrings. The next exercise is mainly for your own sanity, and this can be two to three sets of eight reps of the barbell curl, which if I had to pick one exercise for your biceps, it would be the barbell curl. So a novice lifter like me is very sensitive, which is why Katie compares me to a dropped soda bottle, but you really don't need to do this. This is why we do compound exercises, because you are gonna grow everywhere. When we do the barbell row or the T-bar row, your biceps are gonna be engaged a lot. So you don't really need this, but again, Who's gonna go to the gym if you don't curl, right? No one, no one. A few words of wisdom is that you are never gonna be as big as your pump. So you're gonna be curling, you're finally gonna see that bicep vein, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel big, but the second you walk out that door, it's all gonna go away, I promise you that. It's the problem we all face, being natural bodybuilders. Last but certainly not least, we're gonna be doing the inverted row, pulling high to work our upper back and our rear delts. So I would always recommend doing a little bit more pulling than you do pushing. You don't wanna have bad posture and be going like this like a lot of guys, because every day is chest day when you're a novice lifter. But I highly recommend start doing a lot more upper back work, probably like close to double the pull than you do the push. Bring everything back, good posture. Do you want a bigger bench than all of your friends? You don't bench more. I mean, well, yeah, you do bench more, but also you want to work on your upper back and your rear delts to build stabilization on your bench press, which will make you stronger. A lot of people don't know about this. So if you want that edge, hammer the upper back, hammer the rear delts, stable base, boom. Workout is a wrap, and that is the workout that I wish that I did when I first started lifting. Short, sweet, very, very effective. So why did I not do that? It's because I watched a lot of YouTube fitness, learning how to lift, watching a YouTube workout montage, just like learning how to box, watching the movie Creed. It's not gonna get you very far. So you want a girl that's not just one dimensional. You want her to be smart, you want her to be funny, and you want her to be sweet. And the same goes for macros. You don't just wanna focus on protein. You wanna focus on carbs, and you wanna focus on fat. Carbs are good, and fat is good. So one thing I did when I first started getting into fitness was that I completely eliminated going out to eat because I did not know exactly what was inside what I was eating. So I would try to learn how to eyeball right off the bat. So every now and then you might not know who or what is going inside you. You can make your best guess, but in the end it won't really make a meaningful difference. So we got some shawarma right now. And uh, with this stuff, you either get the length or the girth and that doesn't just go for shawarma and you might even get lucky enough to get both. So if you're like me, a classic romantic, you like to stand it up, sensually strangle it, pick a side, and go to town. Mmm. I always get carried away with the garlic sauce and I decide after I eat it if it was worth it. So I think it's super important to be able to make fitness fit into your lifestyle right away. If you're used to going out to eat every Wednesday, go out to eat every single Wednesday. Make it work. You know, don't stop enjoying time with your friends and family because you're into the gym. You know, you can always find ways to have a balance. What? Mm. How am I gonna know the macros now of that bite? When I first got into fitness, it was one of the most unhappiest times of my life because I did it all wrong. I had no balance at all. The second fitness seems, you know, overwhelming or complex, something isn't right. Some of the best things in life, like health and fitness, can be carried to excess, and that's exactly what I did. So it's totally fine to be able to take a step back and admit to yourself that you are being ridiculous. So a lot of the things that I showed you guys today, 
I really wish that I adopted right when I started because I know I would be a lot bigger and feel a lot better and just be a lot happier during my journey. So I highly recommend just to take a lot of these tips to heart if you're just starting. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.